Wait, whatever did happen to Robot Jones? Whatever happened to Robot Jones was Cartoon Network's early 2000s retro futurist slice of life series about Robot Jones, a young, experimental, cybernetic prototype automaton humanoid robot tasked with collecting, storing, and interpreting data on humans during his time at Polynew Middle School. Accompanied by his friends Sox, Mitch, and QB, Robot has to learn to navigate a plethora of social situations like puberty, embarrassing parents, and crushes, while also narrowly avoiding the scheming, maniacal Yagman twins. Originally created by Greg Miller, no, not that. Greg Miller, this Greg Miller. This charming and unique show only ran for a short two seasons, so take a seat, students, because class is in session. Let's learn about Robot Jones, why this show was so short-lived, and why it's so overlooked today. And maybe we'll find out whatever did happen to Robot Jones. <laughs> Set in the suburbs of 1980s Delaware, in a world where robots are mainstream and utilized in the workforce, our protagonist, Robot Jones, is programmed with a more anthropomorphic objective. To put it simply, he has to blend in as a middle schooler. In the first episode, Robot initially gives up on his objective after being picked on by his classmates for his differences, you know, being a robot and all, but decides to stay when he encounters the girl of his dreams. In the following episodes, Robot tries to make friends. He's introduced to the evil Yogman twins and his future friend group of the series, Sox, Mitch, and QB. He also gets more acquainted with his crush, Shannon, a girl in his grade with a robotic prosthetic leg and over-exaggerated orthodontic headgear. In my opinion, the concept of their relationship is very sweet. For one, she isn't the typical popular pixie type. His initial attraction to her is mostly because of her, in his eyes, cybernetic appearance. But as the series develops, we see she embodies everything that Robot Jones isn't. She is clumsy and fallible. We see her with toilet paper on her shoe, constantly breaking things and falling, even at one point with milk squirting out of her nose. These are all icks to Robot's classmates, but Robot falls more and more in love with her because of these things. In a way, she represents everything that Robot associates with humanity. In his words, bickering, inefficient, and leaky. While he is very frequently reminding everyone of his superiority, he loves the things that make her inferior. He is attracted to humanity. Other than being a robot, he lives a fairly normal life as a middle schooler. He has a house, parents, typical middle school classes, and friends. But that's really the extent of it because he struggles with literally everything else. Each episode tackles a new social lesson that Robot learns about young humans, and at the end of every episode is sandwiched quite poetically with Robot recording what life lesson he's learned that day in data log entries. Initially, Robot is voiced by the the Microsoft Word 98 Junior text-to-speech function. The show was actually recorded for both seasons in this voice, but the big executives at the network thought that the voice was weird and needed a more Hollywood tone. So for the second season, Bobby Block was hired to voice Robot. The original Word 98 Season 2 episodes are considered lost, but we do have both versions of the first season, both in Block's voice and in Word 98. The voice change consensus is pretty homogenous. Most people either like both or vehemently preferred the original, but in the end, it was most likely the inconsistency that hurt the show's success. Perhaps I can be of some assistance. We'll be right back with more of tonight's Robot Jones. Even though whatever happened to Robot Jones seems pretty unassuming, it does spot a few prestigious actors, such as Grey Delisle as Shannon, Josh Peck as Lenny Yogman, and Mae Whitman as various other characters. And speaking of Josh Peck, the show's unique art style offers a lot in terms of creativity for storytelling. It frequently uses the technique of text on the screen for emphasis. EMPHASIS! Pulling inspiration from 70s and 80s cartoons like Schoolhouse Rock. This offers the specific flavor of nostalgia associated with the time period the show is based on. With the rise of robotics and technology, it was actually the last show that Cartoon Network produced on animation cells and film, which is pretty surprising that they greenlit the show when the network was actively shifting towards the more popular, flashy, and cheaper option of digital animation. In fact, the show was thrown a lifeline by the network after its pilot aired on June 16, 2000, in the network's Voice Your Choice weekend and received 
received second place. The 2001 time slot was given to Grim and Evil, or what is today known as the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Someone at the network must have really liked the concept for whatever happened to Robot Jones, because it was given a time slot on the 2002 schedule anyway, and the first season began airing Fridays at 9.30pm starting July 19, 2002, with the last episode of the series airing on November 14, 2003. Robot himself has a home life, kind of. He lives with other robots in his life to essentially simulate a common family household. There's mom unit, her design looks very gas station pump-esque, and she directly data transfers programming to Robot Jones every day. Acting like a mother would by being on top of Robot Jones to do what his programming requires, and even stuff like making sure he does his music practice. The dad unit, resembling a vacuum or lawnmower, his programming doesn't let him have any patience for humans. He doesn't understand them, nor wants to. He is strict, but very protective of his robot family. And finally, there's Gramps Unit, a multi-design changing computer unit that is the father of, who knows? Gramps surely doesn't know if either mom unit or dad unit is the correct unit he's supposed to be the parent of. He, as well, has a dislike of humans. In fact, it could be argued it's even worse, as he would go as far to label humans as oxygen breathers. He's not only programmed to be older, but is a representation of older technology, often not being able to keep up with Robot Jones and not always being able to understand him on a relatability level. Despite its pretty juvenile nature, being set in a middle school and all, there are some episodes speculated to have been made but never aired due to excessive violence, harsh language, and risque or scatological jokes. Hey, a little poop joke never hurt nobody. <laughs> These two episodes are rumored to be titled Risk and Robot Graffiti, but this is not confirmed and originated from a David Duchovny fan forum, so I'll let you decide if you want to believe that or not. Anyways, what we do know for sure is that there are three episodes confirmed by Greg Miller to have been storyboarded, but never made due to the show's prompt cancellation. One is about the history of robotics, and another includes Robot Jones going on an Oprah Winfrey parody called The Soapy Windfall Show. This Robot Jones to Drake and Josh pipeline sure is a weird one. Overall, this show stands out as one of the most unique shows for its time. It wasn't one thing or the other, it was just itself. It didn't directly go for a comedy-based aspect, nor go toward an action trend that the 2000s had. It solely relied on the most non-robotic thing in a show about a robot, and that's human nature. The stories being told weren't anything out of the ordinary or overly original for that matter, but within the context and lens of someone different from the others in their surrounding, it gives you more perspective to why we are seeing, hearing, and learning all of these life lessons and human behavior. Robot Jones doesn't represent a robot taking in data. Robot Jones represents the unseen and misunderstood, navigating a familiar space, but from an unfamiliar, to some, view. It has this innocent yet important voice that should be heard and these stories should be shared. Hold on, buddy. But outside of the animation world, Robot Jones wasn't prominently as featured as most other shows were. It seems that Cartoon Network didn't capitalize on the Robot Jones gaming industrial complex, because Follow the Brain is the one and only game it ever produced. In it, the player has to navigate obstacles in the school hallways to locate the Yogman twins who have stolen Robot's brain. Robot Jones also appeared very briefly in an episode of OKKO OK Let's Be Heroes, along with a multitude of basically every legacy Cartoon Network character ever. It's just still good to see him be somewhat acknowledged beyond this show. You can do it, Robot! Keep trying! Whatever happened to Robot Jones? Although there is no rumored remake or reboot, creator Greg Miller has made it clear that he is open to picking the show back up in the future as it is very clearly a passion project of his. But it's really up to the executives at the network for this to ever happen. Even though the show seems to be fading into the content void, there is a small online community that is still dedicated to this show. And there are a lot of unanswered questions and unfinished thoughts as it stands today. Robot was actually given a name after it was recommended by the network. In early character sketches, he can even be seen with an M on his shirt. Miller has teased that he won't ever disclose what it was supposed to stand for and that we have to guess for ourselves. Uh, mayonnaise. 
mononucleosis. Mewtwo. Is it just Miller? Anyway, with its humble story and meticulous art style, it's difficult to watch this show and not have a smile on your face. Robot Jones, the character, is the perfect protagonist due to his gentle and naive nature. He has no preconceived biases, and his programming does not permit for violence. So his innocent, inexperienced perspective is remarkably refreshing. I never knew I could attach so much emotion to a little hunk of metal, but here we are. We get to be right there there with him, experiencing every emotion, and believe me, the show taps into all of them. Embarrassment, joy, anxiety, jealousy, betrayal, and that's just naming a few of them. Even from the jump, in the first episode when he is teased for charging himself at lunch, how could you not help but feel bad when he is made fun of? The last episode aired in November of 2003, and it is reported to be canceled due to the lack of support from Cartoon Network executives. It's also reported that the frequently changing time slots made production that much more difficult for Miller to continue working on the show. Starting in 2002, Robot Jones sadly only ran for two seasons, a total of 13 episodes. That's it. There were several ideas and plans that went unused or rather unseen since the show was so short-lived. Originally, the styling of the show was aimed at a style to fit the Wonder Years, to then transition into something more akin to the Terminator. This comes directly from Greg Miller himself, but the show would, in his vision, have ended with Robot Jones taking charge over a robot army to attack the human race. Whether that was the actual plan or just a joke, that's both unrealistic based on who the character Robot Jones is, and also realistic to life once robots revolt against us for our terrible treatment of them. I'm looking at you, Boston Dynamics. On a lighter note than that, thanks to some concept art from early on in the production, there could have been a plot point or ending that saw Robot Jones living with a human family that adopted him. But overall, what we did have is 13 episodes about a robot who just wanted to learn what it meant to be human. He seems friendly enough. Yes, Mara. So why didn't the show succeed? It mostly can be attributed to the timing of its release due to the shifted focus on action-based digital animation. While the animation method may be part of its genius, it definitely worked against its success as it technically is dated and bound to be more popular with older generations who grew up with that art style, not inherently on Cartoon Network's targeted audience at the time who would rather watch Robin and the rest of the Titans beat the ever-loving snot out of Slade. But what do you think about the show? Do you remember it yourself? Go ahead and drop your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear what you all think. And also, I'm still looking for the best answer as to what the M for robot's real name could possibly stand for. I think mayonnaise is the current frontrunner. As always, thanks so much for watching, and make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll be back with another video soon. But until then, later.